Here, yeah, welcome to the second uh, Surrey IT Geeks uh, meeting. Very glad to see you all here. Uh, you can watch your channel look and you have uh, here in this meeting. Uh, we basically get into to, to learn about Go from the horse's mouth, as I say. The look is part of the TV. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I believe he's, he's working on the compiler and you have this. Uh, you know, really like professional comes to using uh, the Go language inside the uh, app engine. So, I think we, as we already said, there were two very, very brief brief uh, introduction crash crash process, and then it's hands on. So, whoever installed the app engine uh, SDK can try and uh, bootstrap some kind of location, and I guess you know, we will stand by and help with it. And the other option is to just go to the Go language tour to get an idea of what language is like. But we'll look at that exercise. It has some non trivial exercises, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well spent to hear Okay. And if I have any further ado, yeah. Right. Thanks. Um, so, uh, I'm Luke uh, Black. I work here at uh, Google Zurich. Uh, I've worked here for about seven years. I worked on lots of things. Uh, for the last year and a half, I worked on the uh, Go compiler, uh, reading the inside. Ironically, that's written in C. So, last year and a half, I've written C more than anything. Uh, and go only as little tests to see if I can create a compiler. And um, um, uh, I liked the language immediately when I saw it, uh, so I just uh, sent uh, the team uh, a little mail saying, hey, can I come here? And they let me, so I've been having a good time. Uh, and what I want to do is just uh, take uh, a brief uh, taster to the, uh, the essentials of the language and the two features that I like that I like most. And then afterwards, as I said, Johan will talk about the yeah, we can get through that. So, the Go language in 20 minutes. Uh, this is all stolen from two excellent talks by uh, one of the creators, Rob Pike. Uh, I put links, I'll distribute the slides later on. Uh, there was the Go programming language, which, which introduced it to the public. And there is another Go at uh, language design, and there you can both find them on the link from the golang.org uh, website. Uh, there are excellent talks, and they both cover in uh, roughly two hours together. It's much more than I can do here, but you can do that in the comfort of your work. <laughs> uh, or lunch break. And then uh, the examples I uh, present are, you will find, if you go and have a look at the world's work later on. So, uh, the, where does it come from? Um, uh, both Lisa Ken Thompson and Rob Pike uh, sat together in an office, in the Mountain View office, um, and um, were, by the existing systems that we use at Google to write really big things, getting um, ideas of how things might be better. And uh, they started drawing things on the, the whiteboard, which are building a full. And then, um, in the course of the year after, they started some real work, and they were soon joined by uh, Russ Cox, who now does, if you follow the changes in the discussions, roughly half of the work of his IT. He's insane. He's, I mean, he's insanely productive. We, we joke that he's a team uh, who, who replies to the names. Um, and. Um, uh, Ian Taylor, who's uh, famous because he worked a lot on uh, GCC and uh, the Google Inher before he's also part of the team. And he showed up one day and he said to the team, I like your language, I made a uh, GCC front-end for it. And I said, <laughs> so now we have, um, uh, it's all, all the development is done out in the open. Uh, so part of the team is at Google, but all the changes are on uh, code.google.com slash p for project slash go. Uh, it's also where the issues list is and where the build dashboard is and uh, this uh, weekly release since uh, quite a while and um, uh, that's for the 568G toolchain as we call it. Uh, this is uh, inherited from the Plan 9 uh, development environment that they, uh, that uh, Ken Thompson and Rob Pike and also Chris Cox worked on before at Bell Labs, before it came to Google. Um, more than half of the contributions though are from people all over the world that we've never met, although we tried to send them a gopher. Gopher. Uh, if they are, uh, if, the, if you, if they contribute 
uh, patches. Um, so the, there's the, the Plan 9 derived uh, um, can C derived tool chain. Uh, 5, 6, and 8 stand for the letters or the numbers that um, Plan 9 used to identify architecture. So 5G is the Go compiler for ARM, 8G is the Go compiler for the 86 or 386. Um, and 6G is the compiler for the uh, AMD uh, 64 bit tool chain. Um, and these are the three officially supported um, architectures in the in that tool chain. Then there's GCC Go, uh, instructions on how to get it are also going on the board. I think it should be in the official GCC distribution now. So if you download fresh GCC from the net, it, has, it should have the Go front end built in. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, and then someone here in Zurich uh, wrote a uh, just-in-time compiler for Windows. He showed up one day and said, hi, I wrote a just-in-time compiler for your, for your uh, language, because I like it. People show up because they like it. Um, and turn out to written compilers for it. There were some other... This is annoying. Oh, no, oh, no. Here. Now it's in vaults. So, uh, <coughs> Express Go, uh, the author is uh, Alexei uh, Gokber. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a Russian name. It's a Kai, and so it's, that is ironic that the name really fits the name of the language. Um, so, uh, we see real adoption out there. Um, the standard distribution uh, includes a basic set of libraries that we've just thinned out to uh, the uh, core of essentials. And a couple of tools like uh, GoDoc, which uh, extracts uh, documents, uh, documentation from the source code. Uh, there's GoFoot, which personally is my favorite, because one of the things that drives me nuts is discussions about white space. GoFoot is a program that reads the source. Uh, it's actually the front end of the compiler. And then it uh, writes out the source in a standard form in standard formatting. So you'll never, ever, ever have to discuss with your coworkers where to put the bricks. Um, even if it probably doesn't fit your entire set of preferences to the, to the max, but believe me, it's well worth never having to, having to talk about it uh, ever again. Uh, there's a tool called Seago, which uh, is used to glue uh, C programs to, um, to Go programs. Uh, and since uh, a couple of weeks, a couple of months maybe by now, there's a tool which uh, is called Go to increase uh, confusion. Uh, and it's a uh, front end for uh, compiling, building, getting distributions, and <coughs> installing. Uh, and it makes it really easy to uh, add packages and get source code and build stuff. <coughs> source. Since uh, I think it's a year that we've had the uh, App Engine support? It's May. May last year it was introduced. Uh, and uh, the the big thing we're all working on, except me, I'm done, uh, is the 1.0 version that was announced. Uh, it's supposed to be a version of the language that's stable, and if you write for it, you can assume that things will keep working for a couple of years. Um, so that's what we're all working on. Uh, what essential parts of the history did I forget? Somebody? Probably. So, um, Rob said um, that. One of the stated goals of the language is to make programming fun again. So, I don't know if you're familiar with Java, C++. <laughs> um, and, um, uh, so, we build systems uh, at Google, and these, these uh, existing languages to work in have a couple of problems. Uh, most notably, uh, managing dependencies, uh, but also they tend to be very verbose. And so the official story and justification is that over the past 10 years there have been no major new languages uh, introduced. Raise your hand if you can think of a good language that I completely forget here. No? Okay, glad we all agree. Um, uh, but the environment in which we program has changed a lot since, uh, since a decade ago. Uh, so the libraries and dependency chains, they grow completely out of bounds and become the major part of the work. Um, in Google, that means that not only can you fix any problem that you find, you can also break any reverse dependent of you that you never heard about. Um, 
So it makes uh, compilation slow and error prone and um, it's going on hand. Uh, it's a nice example. If you include uh, standard layout updates, you can see it needs 9,360 lines. If you include um, uh, IO student, student IO, no, the C++, the C++ version? Yeah, right. So it, it reads uh, tens of files and thousands of lines, and if you include anything non trivial, uh, we had one file that somebody figured out uh, was read 30,000 times during the build of one black miner. And um, so that's, uh, that's a problem. Um, nowadays, um, much more than 10 years ago, networking is the norm. So worrying about access to disk and, and how, how to write things over partitions is not really what you're occupied with. You write servers that uh, are in massive clusters that do RPC calls all over the place. And um, within one server you have multi-cores that you try to keep uh, busy. And working with threads and mutexes between them is very error prone. So, um, because of this change environment, our builds get slower and uh, the development cycle gets slower. Um, and um, there's an observation by Paul uh, Griesemar that uh, the type system tyranny, he calls it in, in languages like C++ and Java, <coughs> make, it, make it so the type system is supposed to help you, but in practice it gets in the way and people just want to be done with it, just uh, write some Python, and then we'll figure out what to do if it's a list or it is when we get it. So, um, uh, 